Well, Father, we do come before you, and first and foremost, I thank you for your word, your word that is alive and active, your word that brings transformation to our mind, our will, and our emotions. We come before you, Lord God, and we choose your ways according to your word. Father God, I thank you, Holy Spirit, right now, just releasing in each one of us such an insatiable hunger for your word, God that we're just not satisfied until we can get into your word daily and get your truth for our lives, Lord God, so that we can walk as the sons and daughters of the living God with the authority that you have called us to walk in in this earth and release and bring forth your redemption to every place that we go. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. amen. Well, hallelujah, isn't that fun? Yeah, I was praying this morning, and uh, of course, you know, you get into prayer, the Lord changes everything on you, because he likes to do that. And uh, so I just trust that this is a word in season for each one of us. I know whenever I, uh, as he was speaking to me some this morning, I was, I was being challenged. And some things that, you know, you know, but you kind of get slack in some areas, so uh, I'm going to share them with you now. <laughs> Are you ready? <gasps> You're not. Are you ready? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I, I didn't believe you. Man, you guys would think you'd learn this by now. Are you ready? ready? Okay, all right. So, you know, we've got to understand one thing that's very, very important, that we do live in a fallen world, okay? And because we live in a fallen world, at times we can be affected by it. We don't have to be infected by it, but we can be affected by it. But the thing about it is, it's so very, very important, is we've got to learn how we have truly been created to be overcomers of those things, okay? So we're, we live in a fallen world, but we're here to be a part of redeeming it in every place that we are. And you know, the redeeming part is really, really fun when we're around people who are high-fiving Jesus, when we're around people that are just nice, and they're happy, and it's great. But it's a whole different ball game when we're around people that they just like to fight. They just like to be nasty. They just like to be hurtful. That's when it gets challenging, am I right? How many of you know we're here to redeem those areas also? So the Lord gave me a few things that um, I think, I know it helps me whenever I choose to apply them to my life. And my prayer is, is that as you apply them to your life, you'll see God's supernatural transformation come into your life and your relationships and situations, amen? So conflict and adversity is part of life, all right? Whether we like it or not, if we're in this world, we're going to be around people that they just like to stir the pot, man. They like conflict. I don't know why. I like to be happy, but not everybody's there with me. I annoy people sometimes because I'm happy. Can you imagine that? I mean, think about that. I mean, you walk into a place, you're happy, and people are like, get away from me, you're too happy. I'm like, would you rather me just be like mean and hateful? What's, what's wrong with you? People need deliverance, that's all I can say right there, all right? So, you know, it's understanding how we look at conflict from God's perspective. Because if we're just looking at situations and things that are happening to us and people that are, we feel that they're against us from a human perspective, then it gets very, very challenging and very difficult to see from God's perspective and bring the change that God wants to bring in each one of our lives. Amen? And when we see things from his perspective, then we can choose to begin to apply his principles. And that's where the rubber really meets the road, okay? When we choose to start coming into alignment and agreement with the principles of Almighty God, okay? So, Proverbs. Let's go to Proverbs, and this is in the New King James Version. Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 3. 
And it says, the refining pot is for silver and the furnace for gold, but the Lord tests the hearts. Okay? I thought that was really interesting because we have God's divine nature in us. Silver, when it speaks of in the Bible, silver speaks of redemption. Gold speaks of God's divine nature, okay? And we have God's divine nature in us. So we can choose to let him answer the door every time when conflict comes, or we can choose to answer the door. I don't know about you, but anytime I let Jesus answer the door with conflict, it's a whole lot easier. But when I choose to answer the door, it can get very, very complicated and very difficult. So I want to always let God's ways come forth and flow. Because if we want to be a part of redeeming, we've got to be a part of taking our stand and being firm in the truth of God's word. Amen? So understand, and then it says, but the Lord tests the hearts. Can I tell you, we have a wrong perspective of test, I think. Because we're brought up, I don't know about you, but myself in high school, who, who loved being tested? Oh, I hated it. Did anybody love being tested? Okay. Oh, oh, Aaron, you would. Oh, and you do. Okay, all right. Well, praise the Lord. Well, you see it from the right perspective then. Understand that test isn't, I used to always think, oh, this, the test, the teacher's going to find out, you know, or she's going to correct, and it, it's going to be wrong, and it was all about getting it right or getting it wrong. But truly, tests are to reveal to us where we need to grow, where we need to mature, where we need to learn some things. So tests are a good thing. I still don't like them. I'm sorry. I'm growing. I'm growing in that area. Hallelujah. So, you know, understanding that when it says that God tests, it's not so that he can sit there and tell us we got it wrong. It's so that he can reveal to us the places in our life that we're choosing not to fully trust and believe him where we just need to come to know him in a greater measure so that we can walk through life and situations and difficulties into victory. Amen? Because every place that we're not walking in victory, those are the places that we need tested in. Does that make sense? Because those are the places that we need to grow. Those are the places that we need to just get more knowledge of who our God is in us. Very, very important. So, I have a little story for you, because I thought this was very interesting, and it's, it's on Walt Disney, okay? I know I don't agree with the, the agenda that they're choosing to walk in now, but I don't think when, when Walt Disney was founding Walt Disney, I guess would be the thing, that he had the, the agenda that it is today. But anyway, this is interesting, because Walt Disney... He was devastated when a dishonest distributor got his most popular car cartoon. His first cartoon was Oswald and Lucky Rabbit. I don't know if you all remember that. I don't remember that. But anyway, and hired. This guy stole his prized cartoon that he had worked very hard at. And not only did he do that, and then he went and he hired all but one of his animators that was working for him. Just took them right away. The distributor thought he had won, but his company later went bankrupt while Walt Disney created an entertainment empire. You see, we have a choice when adversity comes. We have a choice when conflict comes into our lives. We can focus on everything that is wrong and everything that has been done to us, or we can focus on who our God is, and we can keep our focus on moving forward in Him. You see, because if we get caught up with the blame game, and it's their fault that I can't do anything now, and it's their fault that, you know, I'm in the mess I am, 
That is a victim mentality. And if you choose to live there, it's not pleasant. And here's the sad thing. Anybody that chooses to stay in that victim place makes his, makes his, is that, is that even a word? Makes everybody's life around them pretty miserable also. Am I correct? We don't want to be victims. How? How? As the blood-bought children of the Most High God, can we ever fall? and be duped into thinking that we're victims when he has made us more than conquerors. He has made us victorious in him. Why would we believe a lie that because of what somebody has done to us, now we can't be victorious? And I am not denying the fact that some very challenging and very difficult and very cruel things have been done to people. But I'm here to tell you that our Jesus is bigger than them all. And if you'll focus on him, he'll bring you through and he'll bring you out of that place. Amen? Because that's who our God is. Woo! That's for sure. See, he could. Walt Disney could have chosen to be a victim. But he chose to be a victor. We have a choice all the time when adversity comes, when conflict comes into our lives. What are you going to do about it? Who are you going to let answer the door? You know, every one of us, and, and, and I'm not declaring this, but we have a choice, okay? And I heard a story, or I heard this, that everyone has two buckets, okay? In one bucket, there is gasoline. And in the other bucket, there is water. And when conflict or adversity comes into our lives, we have a choice which bucket we throw on that situation. Because if we throw the gasoline on the area of conflict, it gets worse. But if we choose to throw the water of the Word of God on those situations and circumstances, it diffuses it. Now, I understand because we live in a fallen world, not everybody likes the Word of God. And even though you're throwing water of the Word of God on them, they may feel like they're burdened. Not my fault, okay? Because we're giving them the truth of God's Word. And they may feel the fire of God in those areas. But you know, understand, we always want to choose God's ways. Always, in every situation. I love to say I do. Hallelujah, I'm still a work in progress. I don't know about y'all, but he's good. He's good all the time, amen? Understand, in situations, if our focus is always on man, okay, um, to get us out of things, to do things, if we're looking to man to fix us, we miss a whole lot, okay? We miss the goodness of God because our focus is on man getting us out of situation, somebody fixing us, somebody being there, somebody, 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 okay? And it'll get us in trouble every single time. Let's go to Jeremiah, and the new, this is in the New King James also, please. Jeremiah 17, let's start with verse five. It says, thus says the Lord, cursed is the man. Cursed, that's bad. We don't want that. Every time we step out of trusting God and start trusting man, God is not cursing us. We're choosing to release the curse in our life, okay? Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord, for he shall be like a shrub in the desert. He shall not see good. He shall not see when good comes. It's not that good's not coming. Good is coming. But when our focus is in the wrong place, we miss it. We miss it. We don't even see the goodness of our God. It's messed up. I'm messed up thinking. Wrong perspective. Wrong way to look at it. Don't even see when good comes. Wow. That should wake us up. 
but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land which is not inhabited. When we choose to think it's everybody else's fault for where we are, when we choose to think about what they did all the time, how they hurt, what they said, and put the blame there, yeah, you know what? You're going to feel like you're living in a dry, parched, salt place. Nobody likes me. Everybody hates me. Nobody's ever there for me. And I don't care if you are surrounded by a gazillion people who love you. It will never be enough. Listen to what I'm saying. Stop looking to anyone to be your fixer. Keep your focus and eyes upon Jesus. And then, will he use people to come into your life and be a blessing? Yes. Are we grateful and thankful for those people? Yes, we are. But the moment we start trying to make them our Savior, we're going to miss the goodness. It's what the Word of God says. Our perspective gets wonky. It's all wonky-like. All right, verse 7. Ooh, this is the part I like right here. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. We always have a hope in Jesus, okay? I know people let us down and we think, I've just lost all hope in humanity. Good! You're in a good place. You need to lose all hope in humanity. Get your hope in Jesus and you'll get a lot happier. Woo! I'll preach all day long right there. Okay, verse 8. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river, and will not fear when heat comes. That means we're going to stretch out. We're going to get our source in the right place in Christ Jesus. And in Christ Jesus, he gives us more than enough so that we can be a blessing to those around us. That's fun, huh? We don't even have to fear. What is fear? It's a spirit. Who's given it? The enemy. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. So therefore, if fear comes in, you need to take authority and kick it out in the name of Jesus. It, treat it like it's a rattlesnake. Does it, please tell me. No one in here likes rattlesnakes, do they? Because <laughs> some people are like, oh, I do. I'm like, no. We had somebody, they, they're at the beach, and they want to they swim with the sharks. They want to catch a shark. I'm like, they can eat you. Why would you want to do that? But anyway, some people do. But anyway, I'm, I'm focused now. Let me get back here. Wow, it doesn't take much, does it? Does it have any people? Okay, spread out by its roots by the river and will not fear when heat comes, but its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. That's awesome. But we've got to keep our focus in Jesus as our source, okay? And I know you've heard me say this before. Our jobs are not our source. Our jobs are an avenue that God uses to, to flow blessings into our life. But the blessing comes from God, okay? And when God's blessing us, if the job goes away, the blessings still flow. But if our trust is in our employer or that, that place, then we'll miss the good that God has our flow will get off, okay? So we want to make sure that we're staying in the right place, all right? So understand the fire of God, okay? When conflict, when situations, when adversity comes, you know, many times God will use it to burn out the dross, burn out the impurities, burn out the hindrances that are keeping us from walking in the fullness of, of what God has for us to walk in. And so here's some things I want to point out. 
There are some things that will invite conflict and adversity into our lives. Don't you want to know what they are so that we never ever walk in them? Okay? So some of the things that will invite adversity into our lives is pride. We know it all. I don't need it. I don't need to hear it. I don't need to change. It's everybody else that needs to change. That is nobody here, right? Because I don't know about you, I swear God has me changing on a, a, like a second by second time frame, I believe, okay? Wrong perceptions. When we get off of God's perspective, when we start thinking weird things, our perspective will invite, we'll begin to walk in the spirit of suspicion, okay? Everybody's against me. Nobody likes me. You know, those types of things. And that will just, that'll just invite craziness, okay? A victim and blame mentality. If there's anything that I have seen invite and destroy families, relationships, workplaces, it is the victim and blame mentality, okay? So that's, yeah, that's nasty. And self-centeredness, woo, being selfish, making everything all about us, will invite adversity and conflict into our lives. So if we don't want adversity and conflict in our lives, because there's enough out there that we'll get to deal with without being a part of the problem, okay? We are here to be a solution to every problem, not a part of it, okay? So as a church of Jesus Christ, hallelujah, we are being refined by the fire of God to come through and let the new man in Christ arise, okay? We have been made new in him. So we're in a process of being trained on how to let him come to the forefront and not our itty bitty feelings, okay? What did I say before? It's all about our growth. It's about our maturing into Christ-likeness. And we get to do that every day. We get to do it every day. We never arrive there. So as I truly believe, as long as we're on the face of this earth, we're always going to be in a process of growing. If you've arrived, let me know, because <laughs> I want to meet you, man, because you, you got something going on. But can I tell you, we can grow in it. And those, as we grow in it and we apply the word and we apply his principles, I'm telling you, we're like, why didn't I do this before? And, you know, there's principles that I know that I know that I know. And then something comes up, and I don't, I don't know why I don't apply those principles. I know the principles. I know what to do. But something in my flesh, carnal thing that I can be sometimes, rises up, and I try to do things in the wrong perspective, the wrong way, and then things usually get really miserable, and then all of a sudden I get my focus off of man, get my focus on God, and I start applying his ways, and I can't say that the situations always change necessarily, but my perspective changes. And when my perspective changes, I'm now in a place of acceptance, love, and peace. God wasn't withholding any of those things. I was choosing to get my focus on something else, okay? So very, very important that we stay focused on our God. He is so wonderfully awesome. All right, so let's, let's get down to the nitty-gritty. When conflict comes and adversity comes, and sometimes it's within our own household. Did you ever notice the people that are closest to you are sometimes the hardest people to live with? I'm going to tell you why. Because they're the only ones you're living with, for pity's sakes. <laughs> so if you were living with somebody else, guess what? You'd be living with them. So it would probably be some new adversity and conflict to work through. So get over your darling selves and get worked through it. That's my counsel to you. 
okay? Stop it. That's my counsel. Stop it. Okay. Um, so it's not about whether we win or lose an argument. You know, that's, that's our carnal nature. We're all about, you know, you always get your own way. I never could do anything I wanted to do. I just said that the other day. I did. I think it was just yesterday. I mean, oh, we were doing some things, and I'm just like, okay, well, let's do this, and then I want to do this. He goes, well, that's so stupid. Because he is time management man. In case you haven't known, time management man, right there, okay? Because he's, he's got time figured out. He's gonna, if, we're, if we're going to the st couple stores, he's got it mapped out. And, and if, we're, if we're driving up the road and right there is a store I want to stop at, that is not in the plans. And I'm like, yeah, but, but we don't really have any place to go. And he's just like, it's not in the plans. I'm like, for real, for real, this is what I live with. Anyway, so it's a test. It's a test. Hallelujah. So, so I did. I, I was just like, I was just like, oh. he always gets his own way. Why does he, it always have to be his way? How come, and, and, and then I have a tune. Oh, sometimes I can get a tune. And all of a sudden he's like, he's like, well, why, why are you having an attitude with me? I'm like, why am I having an attitude with you? Because we always have to do things your way, or your time frame. He's like, yeah, but it's the better way. I'm like, oh my gosh. Hallelujah. So I just had to release it. I just had to release it to the Lord. I'm just like, okay, God, I'm a work in progress. He's a work in progress. You deal with him. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we did. We ended up getting some things done and doing things, and it, it all worked out. He's still time management man. He is militant man with time. Okay, I'm rabbit trailing. But he is, has anybody, can anybody vouch for me with that one? He is militant man with time. He was in time management. He had a job where he, he timed people in their work. That was what he had to do. He was an industrial engineer and something else. Safety supervisor, okay? So he did, he timed people. Oh, I'm living with him. <laughs> He's really good, he's really good at it. But you know what, here's the thing. I have gotten better because it was an area that I needed to grow in. I really did. Because I have no concept of time. I kid you not. Zilcho concept of time. Time and space, get out of my face. That's pretty much when Bishop Clarice said that. I'm like, that's me, that's me. <laughs> but I had to learn because, like he said, you know, if when you tell somebody you're going to be somewhere, or when something's beginning, you need to be there. And if you can't be there, you need to let them know you're gonna be five minutes late. You're gonna, he's like, it is rude. It is rude. You know, and, and we think everybody needs to be on our time frame. That is self-centeredness, okay? I wasn't planning on going here. But anyway, and I had to learn you know what? Yeah, it is dishonoring and disrespectful to just think everybody can wait for me. What is, I mean, think about that. What is that? So, yeah, I learned. I learned. I got better. I'm a much better time on time person. Some of our biggest fights, I kid you not, was because I wasn't ready on time to leave the house. Oh, he would just leave without me. The biggest blessing of my life was when we got two cars. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> then he's like, I'm leaving. I'm like, okay, I'll see you in a little bit. But now I'm good. Now I'm good. Hallelujah. I just had to grow in that area. I have no idea why I went there. I'm so sorry. Let's focus. Let us focus in Jesus' name. All right, so how we engage in, in conflict is very, very important, okay? Because if we have no rules for engagement, we always make it about defending ourselves. We make it about us, okay? We make it about getting our point of view across. We become attack mode, you know, that type of thing, trying to drive the point home. So here's some, I believe, biblical rules of engagement. Okay, when conflict or adversity arises, even with people who are not nice, even with people who are mean, 
Okay, I believe it's gonna help us out. Number one, avoid, avoid harsh, demeaning words. And I know we live in a world where, man, people can peel wallpaper with their tongue. I mean, say hurtful, mean, hateful things, and then turn around and say, oh, I didn't really mean it, I love you. Can I tell you that never cut it with that guy? You know, because you know, I kind of grew up and you just kind of said your piece and then you got happy in five seconds. Mm -mm. So I had to learn that when I spoke words that are, are, were hurtful, it really affected him. And then it affected our relationship. So I had to learn, you know, I can't just say things that I feel like saying. I've got to have my speech checked by the Holy Spirit. And I understand that's challenging whenever somebody makes you really mad, <laughs> you know, to check that. But here's, here's what I have found to do, found that, that helps me. I'll write things out, okay? And then I'll be like, okay, Lord, that's a little harsh how I said that. That was demeaning, okay? Holy Spirit, help me to, to bring out my, my, my feelings not make it all about my feelings, but to bring them out in a way that is not demeaning or hurtful, okay? And the Holy Spirit's really good. So Proverbs 15, verse 1 in the New King James Version, it says, a soft answer turns away wrath, but harsh words stir up anger. So if you just want to add gasoline to the situation, you know, I guess you can use harsh words. When somebody belittles you, just belittle them back. It's not a recipe for something that that's, tastes good. It's a recipe for something that tastes really bad, okay? Proverbs 15, verse 4, in the Amplified, please. A gentle tongue with its healing power is a tree of life, but willful contrariness in it breaks down the spirit. Okay, so if we want to break down somebody's spirit, that's not what we're called to do. We're called to encourage one another in the faith. Okay, number two, avoid anger. Avoid angry people. And when I say avoid anger, when someone is angry about something, they have a way of pulling you in sometimes. Okay, and we have to be very, very careful because we know that there are two, I always say there's at least three sides, maybe more to every, every story. When somebody comes and talks to you, understand they're telling you from their perspective. I'm not saying that they're lying, I'm just saying it's from their perspective and that there might be different perspectives. I don't know how many times we have been talking to somebody and we hear one perspective Okay, and I mean, it's just out there. And then as, who's the guy that, and the rest of the story, Harvey, huh? Paul Harvey, and the rest of the story. And then we hear the rest of the story, and we're like, well, that adds a little more information to it. So whenever I say that, there's, there's one person's perspective, there's another person's perspective, but the key is, is to get God's perspective, okay? And God's perspective is always right and always good. So be careful that you don't get pulled in to something before you get all the story, but especially get God's word for it, okay? This is gonna be a hard one. Are you ready? Number three, avoid meddling in other people's conflict. What? <laughs> yes, I'll say it again. Avoid, at all costs, meddling in someone else's conflict, all right? Especially if it's a husband and wife. Can I tell you what, that, what that'll happen? They'll make up, and they'll still be mad at you, okay? So understand, give biblical counsel and advice, but, you know, unless somebody's like, seriously physically being hurt then definitely 
call the police, get help, you know, that type of thing. But you know what I mean. If they're having a discussion and you've not been invited into it, back off, Barney. You know, that's my, that's my counsel to you there. All right, so Proverbs 26, and this is in the Amplified also, Proverbs 26, verse 17, it says, He who, passing by, stops to meddle with strife that is none of his business is like one who takes a dog by the ears. You're probably going to get bit. That's the moral of the story. Okay? So, number four. You ready? Avoid giving advice when not ask. What? <laughs> Avoid giving advice when not ask. And I'm going to add this because I have found it. And be very, very careful even when you are asked. Because I have found most of the time people don't want to hear the truth. They, wanna, they want you to agree with them. And if you don't agree with them, then they don't care about even biblical advice and counsel. Okay? So avoid, avoid, avoid that. Okay? Um, and again, you just don't always know all the facts and, and that type of thing. So, you know, I want to, yeah, let's go. Let's, um, Proverbs 9, verse 7. And you know what? I'm sorry, you're not going to have this one. This is in the, um, another version that we don't have up there. If you correct conceited people, you will only be insulted. If you correct a know-it-all or a conceited person, you will be insulted. If you reprimand evil people, you will only get hurt. Never correct conceited people. They will hate you for it. I didn't say don't give them the truth of God's word if God tells you to but be fully aware that they may not receive it, okay? And you better be ready to shake off any hurt and any offense that you get back for it. So if you're not ready to be able to shake it off, don't do it. Otherwise, you're going to end up walking in a whole, a whole lot of hurt. And what do hurting people do? They hurt people, okay? So that's why it's so important that we let God heal us. But if you correct the wise, they will respect you. Anything you say to the wise will make them wiser. What? I'm going to be correctable. Whatever you tell the righteous will add to their knowledge, willing to be teachable and, and learning. To be wise, you must first have reverence for the Lord. If you know the Holy One, you have understanding, wisdom, will add years to your life. You are the one who will profit if you have wisdom. And if you reject it, you are the one who will suffer. There's a lot of people out there that are walking in a victim mentality, walking in a blame mode and mentality. And time and time again, they have rejected wisdom. And they're suffering for it, but they're trying to blame everybody else for it. As a church of Jesus Christ, we can't be a part of that. For ourselves, I mean. We can't get into that mode of thinking that it's somebody else's fault. If we're in situations because we've not listened to the counsel, if we're in situations even, maybe we are in situations that somebody else like Walt Disney was. Where are we going to focus? Because our focus will either send us deeper, deeper into the spiraling, the, the pit of death, or our focus in Christ will bring us up and out of it, okay? So very, very important. It's important that when we're dealing with people who, and, and the reason I'm talking to y'all about it is, of course, we don't want to walk in any of these things, but we're out there ministering 
to a fallen, hurt, hurting world. And it's so very, very important that we are aware of what's going on. And we don't let those things begin to infect us, okay? And we learn how to overcome them. So, you know, I guess I have a few more, but I want to kind of close with this. When we're dealing with a lot of conflict, a lot of adversity, I think it's imperative that we learn to shake it off quickly. And what do I mean, shake it off? I mean, just get it shook off. Get it handed over to the Lord. Get it released to God Almighty, okay? We want to release. We want to forgive. It's so very, very important. And I'm going to go ahead and read this. Um, it's Ephesians 4.29 in the New King James Version. Ephesians 4.29, it says, Let no foul or polluting language, nor evil word, nor unwholesome or worthless talk come out of your mouth, but only such speech as is good and beneficial for the spiritual progress of others. That's what it's about. It's not about us being right and pointing out how somebody else is wrong. It's about, okay, God, how can my heart be opened to mature and grow in you, but how can I encourage them to mature and grow in you? I mean, that's our heart. Spiritual progress of others. Oh, this is in the Amplified. I'm so sorry. I told you New King James, but it's the Amplified. Okay. Spiritual progress of others as is fitting to the need and the occasion that it may be a blessing and give grace, God's favor to those who hear it. You know, that's, that's what it's about. And we're not going to be able to do that when we have our focus on what has been done to us and we get our focus off of all that Jesus has done for me. Jesus has done so much, so much bigger, so much more than what anybody has done. And if we'll let God, he'll feel every place of us so that we can move forward in victory. Now, with that, you know, I, I, I want to say this. You know, I always like to give some balance to it. So let's say, you know, releasing someone, forgiving someone, um, shaking it off, you know, that type of thing. If I walk up to somebody and I say hello to them and they punch me in the gut, I'm going to be like, man, that hurt. Why did you do that? And they were like, well, because I'm just having a really bad day and, you know, you, you said hello wrong. You know, whatever it might be. Okay? And I'm just like, wow. And you kind of walk away. But they come and they're like, oh, listen, man, I'm so sorry. I don't know what came over me. I, that, I was just, just a bad day. Please forgive me. And they were like, yeah, no problem. So anyway, a few days later, I walk up to them, I'm like, hey, how you doing? And they punch me in the gut again. I'm be like, that hurt. And again, go through the whole thing, and later on that day, they come, oh, I'm so sorry, you know, oh, just having a bad day, I just reacted wrong, I'm really working on this. Okay, no problem. So a few days later, I go up to them, hey, how you doing? And they punch me in the gut again. And be like, oh, okay, I'm just going to shake that off. I'm just going to choose to release them. I'm going to forgive them because, God, it's what you're telling me I really need to do. So I'm going to choose to do that. But I'm here to tell you, the next time I get near them, there will be a 10-foot distance between us whenever I say hello. It's not that I don't love them. It's not that I've not released them and forgiven them. But it's just like, hey, from over here, swing all you want. <laughs> Hit the air, but it's not going to be my God again. Okay? And, and you know, we, we, we never, I mean, I, I used a physical thing. But, I mean, people do it with words. People do it with the way we act. And sooner or later, you just have to come to the realization that, wow, I need to be a little guarded here and a little wise 
and set some good boundaries, okay? Because there are people who love conflict. I don't know why, they just do. And it's not that we don't love them, and it's not that we're not there for them to give them the truth of God's word. But we cannot be sucked in to that drama all the time. It's imperative, okay, for us to stay in a healthy place. Does that make sense? Okay. So hopefully, hopefully this helped you because I am not naive enough to think that everybody's just always just so friendly and so nice. I live in this world, and I realize how we have to c overcome things and how not to get sucked into it, okay? Very important. Let's stand to our feet. Father God, we do come before you. I thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your wisdom and counsel. I ask right now, Lord God, whatever adversity, whatever conflict anyone has experienced from their past or whether they're experiencing it even now, I ask, Lord, that you begin to reveal your wisdom on how to engage with the rules, the principles, and from your perspective in these situations, Lord God, to bring forth your purposes and your plans for our lives, Lord God, but for the relationships. Help us, Lord, not to be enablers of destructive behavior patterns. Help us, Lord. Help us to be those who speak and set healthy boundaries for ourselves and for those around us. Show us what is acceptable and what is not acceptable, Lord God, and then help us Help us, Lord God, to instruct others and help others come into a greater dimension of growing in you and growing in maturity of who you are in our lives and in other people's lives, Lord. And we give you praise and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. amen. Well, God bless you. We love you. Go get them and have fun. <laughs>